there. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've had a couple of emails asking me about the uh, airborne survey that we did, uh, the uh, the geophysics survey. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like uh, a little bit like the uh, the professor of the dark arts on the uh, Potter Harry Potter films, but you know, geophysics is not that complicated. As you're probably aware, uh, we have uh, done the helicopter survey over the entire property that we own, 208,000 hectares, and we did it on spaced lines, on horizontal lines going across the property at 400 meter spacing. So um, the image that you can see, I think the, the image dates from around 2005. And I'm sitting in front of a, a magnetic map. Uh, and this was done uh, on the uh, Aurelian property in the vicinity of what turned out to be Ferdinand del Norte later. Um, now this is what is called a, a ground survey. Uh, at the time we didn't have any money to do airborne surveys. So what we did was basically the same sort of thing that we've been doing except that somebody was walking back and forth on the ground I think at the time it was 50 meters spacing between the lines and are walking back and forth with a, a thing called a magnetometer. Essentially what it does is picks up uh, highly iron rich rocks in the subsurface. But uh, just to get back to, to the image, um, you can see a couple of red blobs up the top of it. There's one on the left side and there's one on the right side. Uh, the one on the left side turned out to be uh, what we ended up calling the Camp Porphyry, and the one on the right side turned out to be the Trancaloma Porphyry. Now both of these were drilled. We put three holes in the, uh, in the Camp Porphyry, we put one hole in the Trancaloma Porphyry, and we confirmed that they were copper-rich uh, porphyry deposits. Now, um, and that's about as far as we got. We only got four holes uh, in the whole thing, and then uh, eventually, as you know, uh, the property was acquired by Kinross. Uh, so, but nevertheless, uh, the technique to find copper mineralization, uh, sometimes with gold, uh, they can, these porphyries can be gold rich, um, works very, very well in this part of South America, where uh, typically the porphyries contain a lot of iron rich rock. The iron in this case is a mineral called magnetite. It's highly, um, it's highly magnetic. Uh, if you put a magnet up to uh, little pieces of magnetite, it'll actually cling to it. The other part of the survey we did was a radiometric survey. We're looking for potassium because potassium commonly is an alteration product of porphyry formation. So, um, in this case, we're looking for anomalies, uh, unusual concentrations of low-level radiation due to potassium. And if you get that kind of response on top of an area where you also have a magnetic response, a magnetic anomaly, then almost for sure you have a porphyry. Now whether it's mineralized to one degree or another, it's hard to say. Uh, you're going to have to drill it, you're going to have to sample it and, and see what you have. So this is the purpose, this is the reason why we have spent a million bucks flying the entire property uh, to pick up uh, copper gold porphyries and also to show structure of the underlying rocks. So uh, the magnetism and the radiometric response will uh, show up any difference in the different rock types uh, that are uh, underlying the area. So we can pick up folds, we can pick up faults, we can see uh, where uh, what we call the stratigraphy, the layers of rock, what's going on there. Very, very valuable tool in exploration.